How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Day in the Life video. Today is episode 5 of the Day in the Life series. And in today's episode, I'm going to show you guys my workout routine, my training, my speed session, my shooting technique session, and just take you guys through a full day of eating and preparation for training and all that good stuff. So today I woke up around 6.30. I already had my small mini pre-workout, which was just a smoothie and an apple. And right now I'm about to head out to the gym and work out. I started a new program on the Nike training app. There's a good conditioning program there that I actually really wanted to try out. So I'm going to do this program for the next six weeks and improve my total body conditioning, maybe do a little bit of extra work for myself. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to starting this program. As of now, I've been doing my own workout routines. I've been doing my own programs and stuff, but I actually kind of want to try and follow someone else's for once. I want to kind of learn new exercises, learn new type of uh, workout routines, and just kind of be a bit more creative with my, my workouts and my body and all that good stuff. After that workout, I have a training session planned. I'm going to work a lot on speed and shooting as well as my first touch and all that. All, all the things I feel like I need to work on. Anyways, it's almost 8 o'clock and I want to get to the gym by 8, so I'm quickly going to get uh, prepared and then I'll see you guys at the gym. All right, guys. <clears throat> Damn. All right, guys. Just got finished with the workout. It was a killer. I got drenched, and I'm looking forward to that program. It was actually very, very fun to do that type of workout. Um, definitely tried out new exercises that I wasn't used to, and I'm hoping I can improve them as well. Anyways, right now I'm about to head home. I'm about to get some breakfast, and after that, I have to get some grocery shopping. And then hopefully after that, it stopped raining. So hopefully the rain does not come back, and we can get a training session. I'm still gonna train in the rain, but I just really hope it doesn't rain. Alright 
guys, so here's breakfast. I always have something, some type of variation of this. It's always three eggs with some veggies, uh, some protein, some toast, and then an apple, and then my typical coffee. I have this very, very typically. This is cottage cheese on top. Many of you guys have been asking about that. But I like to stick with this because it makes my body feel good. It makes me feel energized. I get a lot of protein in it. So yeah, I'm just gonna gobble this down. And then after that, I have to head to the grocery store to get some grocery, sh ah, grocery shopping. I'm gonna go and get that training session later this afternoon. So I'll bring you guys with me through that. That's gonna be the main part of this video. But yeah, um, I'm probably gonna bring you guys grocery shopping and show you guys what I get too. All right guys, so just finished breakfast, heading out with my sister right now to get some grocery shopping in. About to go get some healthy food for us too because we're health freaks. <laughs> so true. It's the first time going grocery shopping by ourselves since now I have a carro so I can manejar. <laughs> All right, so let's get the list out. Did I forget my phone in the car? <laughs> Save Probably, oh my God. All right, well, since I'm here, I might as well plug myself. No, I'm just kidding, I won't do that. The most crucial part of the grocery. Apples. All right, you know what time it is. It's healthy ice cream time. All right, let's see. Oatmeal cookie, cookies and cream, caramel macchiato. What about these? How much protein in these? Ooh, not bad. All right, so which one, Ellie? Uh, I'd say go for the sea salt. Sea salt? Alright. Sea salt always wins. Sorry, yes, sir. I wrote the go grind. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Got all the groceries. We are on our way back home. Yes. We're, so, we're such adults now. <laughs> Alright guys, so I just finished getting the grocery shopping done. I'm back home. So it's around 12 o'clock right now. And I'm gonna spend the next hour just working on the Instagram, getting the post out there. And then after that, I'm gonna head to the field and get an individual session, which you guys will join me with. So yeah, it's just for the next hour, chill for a little bit, make sure um, the, the food from this morning digests well, maybe get a small pre-workout snack and then head to the field. All right guys, so I'm at the field and I'm about to get my session in, my individual session. For today's session, I really want to focus on first touch, turning, so really just the midfielder tight stuff. I really want to make sure I solidify that. Those are the fundamentals that I feel like I need to master and improve on. After that, I'm gonna get a little bit of SAQ and speed work. I'm following a speed program that I bought, so I'm gonna be doing those drills. And then after the speed work, I'm gonna finish off with some shooting and finishing to make sure I'm getting that technique down. It's gonna be a quality session, definitely gonna be tough. Definitely, I'm gonna be very tired after the session for sure, but I'm looking forward to it. All right guys, so for this training session, I decided to do a voiceover just so I can discuss what I worked on, what went on during the session, and just kind of introduce to you guys a typical problem that happens when you train individually that can get a little bit frustrating at times. So in this session, I started off by working on my first touch. As you see in this drill, it's just a weighted touch. We try and take two touches past the cone, and then we try and open up the touch across the two cones. And I struggled with this drill. Us usually, I'm really good at this drill, but today, for some reason, I felt off. My touches were not it. Um, it, it, this happens sometimes. Sometimes in your training sessions, you don't feel as sharp, you don't have the best day, and it can get frustrating because you know you work hard, you know you put the work in, you know you know how to do this, but s for some reason, you're just not on it today. Your body, your your touch, everything, it, it just does not work. And I seriously cannot tell you guys how frustrated I was every single time that ball hit the cone. Like, I'd make the pass and it um, hit the wall, the rebounder, it'd come back and it tipped the cone. And it would piss me off so much. Like, I'm pretty sure that's my new pet peeve. It would get me so mad and it, it would get into my head. And I, I seriously contemplated what the hell I was doing in this drill. You know, we all have these days. If you work hard and train individually a lot, you will definitely have a few days where you're just not feeling as sharp as you would like. And I mean, the best way to deal with this is just to do as much as you can during that session to just try and embrace the challenge, really try and focus on each mistake because mistakes are what make you better in the long run. And these sessions, they give you a ton of mistakes. So there's a lot to learn. So every single time, even though you think you know how to do it, 
you make a lot of mistakes. Just remember to learn from these mistakes and get back to your groove. Anyways, I always like to start off my sessions with some sort of first touch or ball mastery work. It gets the feet moving, it gets you feeling a bit sharper, it gets you, you know, just really um, comfortable on the ball before you move into the other things. And personally, I feel like I really want to make sure my first touch is mastered. I really want to master my first touch and be able to direct the ball in space, always be able to set myself up for whatever pass, shot, or dribble I want to do. So I always like to work on my first touch um, before I get into the main component of my session. For this drill, it's a combination of a game scenario drill, which is just operating in space, taking a directional touch, and just being able to cut and then play that ball back and repeat. Always trying to take a directional touch towards the cone you want to go to. Um, kind of making it instinctual. You just want to use whatever foot um, that you know you feel more comfortable using. You're just trying to take that directional touch, be sharp around the cone, and make a sharp cut back and reset yourself. And again, for this drill, I struggled a lot. I made a lot of sloppy touches, a lot of sloppy mistakes, and I had to modify this drill because I had it originally bigger, but for some reason, I just did not feel it. Um, so I had to make it a little bit smaller and focus on some tighter touches. So after the first touch drills, I moved into a little bit of SAQ, and I really want to make sure I improve my speed, my quickness, my agility, my conditioning, and my athleticism in general during this preseason. For this drill, it's a progression. Um, usually you would just do the ladder to a sprint, but I incorporated a deceleration in the middle of the drill to a lateral pushover and then to another acceleration. This is just to really work on those mechanics on really being able to properly decelerate and then make your movement, make your move, and then re-accelerate. Acceleration is a fundamental part of being an athlete in soccer. You want to make sure you're able to accelerate quickly and get to that ball before your opponent. You want to be able to accelerate and catch up to your striker who you're defending or catch up to the ball that's played over the top. So working on your acceleration, regardless of your position, is an essential component of your athleticism as a soccer player. After that drill, I did a little bit of agility mixed with some max speed work. So we start off in the middle cone. We do a side shuffle to the side cone, um, change direction, and then accelerate, change direction, and then open up our stride as we go towards those yellow gates. So I like this draw a lot because it's very game realistic for many midfielders and defenders. In the game of soccer, you're constantly pivoting, you're constantly jockeying and side shuffling side to side when trying to mark or close down some spaces. And then sometimes you have to re-accelerate and catch up to that ball played over the top or to that striker that had a change of pace. For these speed drills, I recommend doing anywhere from four to five reps and making sure to rest between each rep because these type of drills are not fitness drills. They're more or less um, speed drills. So you're really focusing on teaching your neuromuscular system to be quick. Now, I wanted to do more speed drills. I wanted to do like two more drills, but my cab for some reason started to cramp up during the session. So I just finished off with some technique shooting. Uh, I originally had some other shooting drills planned, but since my calf was starting to hurt a little bit, uh, I wanted to keep it light. I didn't want to push it, but I still wanted to work on shooting, so I just focused on technique here. And as you see, my technique is not the best. <laughs> I really need to work on that technique, on really being able to finesse the ball, on being able to curl the ball. And yeah, it's just, this, this is just something you work on a ton and just... It gets better rep after rep after rep as long as you are identifying the mistakes you make while you are making each mistake and just trying to adjust every single time you start a new rep. Alright guys, just finished the session. Uh, I had to end it a little earlier. I wanted to do more, but my calf is cramping up a little bit and I don't want to force it, I don't want to push it. Um, I don't know why. It's, it's a little bit frustrating when your body acts like this because you do so much for it and it just does this. Like I didn't, I, I, it's definitely not overtraining because I definitely rested 
the, uh, the previous two days, you know, so. I have no idea why the calves like this. It just is like that sometimes. I'm just listening to my body and not pushing past anything that can probably hurt me more. I want to be fresh for team training. So I'm just gonna take it a little bit easy. I managed to do everything I wanted to do. Obviously, I would have done more. Listening to your body is extremely crucial. You definitely don't want to, uh, you know, push past something that feels unnatural. If you push past the pain, you might end up making it a lot, a lot worse. So don't push past. Sometimes you do want to push past, especially during the game. You might want to push past as much as you can, but obviously if you can't do, like you can't run, then just stop. Don't make it worse, you know? Um, but you just gotta know when to stop, when to push. And this, definitely this little pain I'm feeling is a stop, you know, like, yes, I want to keep going, but it's not work, it's not work, uh, it's not worth risking like two to three weeks out with a calf injury because I decided to not rest, you know, so I'm just listening to my body and giving it what it needs. Ugh. So just thinking my session right now, I was using stats boards to track my data, more focused today on the max speed so now I can like set up my pitch so now I can see my session um, I, uh, I have other metrics like total distance high speed running high metabolic low distance but I'm really focused on max speed right now and I definitely need to improve that I'm very slow I really need to improve that during my off season anyways guys so just finished the session now I'm gonna head home get some post workout lunch or something like that because it's kind of late for lunch but I'm gonna get a meal and then after that I'm gonna go and chillax I might ice or and do some contrast therapy for my calf since it was cramping up and I want to make sure that is ready for tomorrow so we'll see when we get home but right now just got to drive home all right guys just got home from training um my sister's making some sort of like energy bars whatever she's doing and i just got myself a chicken sandwich we had some chicken in there um and cream got some carbs with the bread and then i got a big bowl of fruit because we got to eat the fruit and yeah that's pretty much my refuel all right guys so just finished that post-match meal or lunch or whatever you want to call it so right now i'm just getting a little bit of ice on the calf and i have a heat pad down there so I'm just doing a little bit of contrast therapy for the little pain I have in my calf. It's more like a cramp, so I'm just like, you know, being cautious. Contrast therapy, I feel like for me, is what works best. Usually I wouldn't ice an injury because, you know, that restricts inflammation and sometimes you want inflammation so you can enter the healing process quicker. But uh, with pains like these where it's not actually like a strain or uh, anything like that, it's more of like a tightness. Doing some contrast therapy, I feel like is the best way to alleviate that tightness and help get the blood flowing even more because you're restricting the blood cells with the ice and then you're reopening them. So it's like allowing blood flow to go through again and like cleanse the area, if you know what I mean. So it removes the pain with the ice and then it gets the inflammation, the necessary blood into the area of injury. So that's why I like contrast therapy. Anyways, right now, I'm just going to ice it for a bit, ice it for 10 minutes and then put another 10 minutes of heat. I'm watching MasterChef right now as I'm doing this and my dog's here. What's up, Gina? What's good? <laughs> but yeah, after, uh, you know, doing this for a bit, I have to go take my sister to soccer. And I mean, that's it for the day, honestly. I'm not doing any more workouts. Um, I'm probably going to get some dinner later. I'll show you guys that. And uh, before I go to bed, I like doing a pre-match, uh, pre-bed routine. So I'll show you guys that as well. Se fue la Nelly. Se fue la Nelly. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, here's dinner. It's just chicken breast, quinoa, and a salad, and then an apple. Just getting lots of good protein, a lot of good carbs, good some good vitamins and nutrients in the salad, and then. I always love my apple with my meals, so I'm gonna gobble this down and I'm gonna go work on the business after um, after this meal and then after that it's just getting some recovery at night before bed and yeah. Alright guys, so just 
uh, finished relaxing for a little bit. Um, obviously, after training, you want to relax. You want to make sure you're recovering well. And something I like to do after my training and after my entire day before I go to bed is a little bit of myofascial release and mobility work to make sure my muscles are recovering properly. So I like doing this before bed from anywhere from like 30 minutes to an hour. Obviously, on my rest days, maybe a little bit longer. Like I said before, um, my calves is feeling pretty tight, it was cramping up at the field today, so I'm going to make sure I get some good myofascial release in there, making sure to really dig deep with the foam roller and the tennis ball, or the cross ball, sorry. And after this, um, it's pretty much going to bed, maybe doing a little bit of reading, but that's pretty much my entire day. Uh, I got some training in, I got a workout in the morning, and after that, it's just uh, enjoy the day and get some mobility at night, that way I can recover quicker. Alright guys, so just finished stretching, body feels loose, calf still feels a little tight unfortunately, so we'll see how it feels tomorrow, and I'll decide if I need a rest day, just make, making sure to listen to the body. Anyways, uh, as I'm going to go to bed, you know, sleep is very important, you want to make sure you get quality sleep, so before I go to bed, what I like to do is just get a little bit of reading in, I read my bible, and get that spiritual connection, I train for my spirituality just as much as I do for football, or at least I should be. So just getting a little bit of reading in. Um, I recommend doing a little bit of reading for bed just to get you a little bit more drowsy and stay off the phone, stay away from the blue lights. That way you can get the most out of your sleep. Anyway, guys, if you guys enjoyed this day in the life video, if you guys enjoyed the content, please leave a like and subscribe. It helped the channel grow and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.